All right, here we go. We have the legendary Roxanne Shantae in the building. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming through. Big fan of you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, I really want you to tell your story. And let's go ahead and start in the beginning. Now, you grew up in Queensbridge. Yes. I grew up in Queensbridge Public Housing. Um, I have four sisters. I grew up on a block called 12th Street. And um, I was, I think I've always been a battle rapper for as long as I can remember. And um, it started there. Okay, now at what point you were in a group home? Yes, yes, I was placed in a group home um, from age 12 to 14. Okay, well, I mean, everyone I've ever talked to about being in a group home always talked about it being a really bad experience. I mean, how was that for you? Well, I mean, I was in Hegeman Girls Group Home located in, uh, but I was in a few of them really, but my last stop that I stayed the longest was Hegeman. And Hegeman, even though there was a lot going on, especially with the 80s, especially with crack first coming out and so many things going on in the streets and so many parents um, had stopped being parents. And so we started seeing really like that whole, I guess I want to say that tidal wave of families breaking apart. Um, Hegeman was actually pretty good. It wasn't as bad as uh, Bushwick Girls Group Home, which was the worst, and I was there also. But Hegeman was, wasn't that bad. It was, um, it was a fact of I made some of my greatest bonds there. I'm um, still uh, young ladies that I am best friends with. Like I, My best friends are from there, and I still have those same best friends today. And we still go through you know, life together. We were nicknamed the Hega Monsters. And um, the reason why they called us the Hega Monsters is because it was a way of separating us from the children, the other girls in the community. So this way, people would automatically know that we were group home girls. So they called you Hega Monsters. And regards to how pretty you were or how well behaved you were or how well spoken you were, the community did not want you to forget that you were from this group home. Yeah. Now what actually led up to you actually leaving your mother and going into a group home? Um, it was just the fact of um, being a being a true being a truant. There was a lot of um, a lot of other circumstances that led up to it. Okay, so you're in a group home. Yes, sir. And in the group home, was that when you really started rapping and battle rapping and so forth? No, actually, I started rapping from Queensbridge, from home. And once I got to the group home, um, every time you go somewhere, there's always somebody who can hit a beat up on the wall, like boom, boom, bat, boom, 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 bat. And then they wait to see who's going to MC or who's going to rhyme. And um, hip hop was actually our way of being able to cope with what our circumstances were and our situation was. Hip hop was an alternative to fighting each other. So we would battle from floor to floor, from dorm to dorm, from room to room. So if I had to say, were my skills honed in there? Absolutely. Did I get better at it being in the group home? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you're battling other girls or guys as well? They would have guys come from around the projects. Like, um, actually, the only one who knew I was from a group home in the industry was Prince Marky D. And I remember my first time getting ready to perform with the Fat Boys, and he looked at me and he said, I know you, you the group home girl. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, they don't even know you from a group home, do they? And I was like, nope. And he was like, yeah, I should tell him. And I was like, yeah, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't, go ahead. You know, and, and I remember his face was like, nah, that's our secret. Don't worry, I won't tell it. So I told it because, you know, I just hate to have anybody have anything over my head. So I was like, listen, y'all, my name is Roxanne Chante. I was straight out the group home. They was like, oh, good, me too. So then everybody was from the group home and everybody was from the youth facility and then everybody had went to Spoffit. So it was like, okay, good. <laughs> that's what's up. So at what point did you actually meet Marley Marl? Um, I've known Marlon all my life. You know, uh, Molly's sister Belle lived on my block, which was 12th Street. Um, he lived in a building across from me and he worked in the Sergio Valente Jean Factory. So because he worked in the Sergio Valente Jean Factory, and that was like a very popular brand of jean then, when he said to me, um, for me to come to his house, he wanted me to do a freestyle over a beat real quick. You know, because he's like, listen, you know, I heard that you wanted the best. 
you know, I'm going to play this beat. Um, let me just hear you spit something. And so I just did Roxanne's Revenge right off the top of my head in the process of doing my laundry. Because I was actually doing laundry for my mother at that time. And I had recently returned home from the group home. So, you know, just wanted to make sure that you do everything right. So I was like, listen, I can't be late. I have to do this laundry. You know, otherwise she's going to have a fit and, you know, my consequences can be rather severe. So let me go and do this laundry. And he was like, this is only going to take like five minutes. And I was like, okay, look, I got seven minutes. And I actually did Roxanne's Revenge in seven minutes. One take, left, and then went back downstairs to do the laundry. So you basically freestyled it? Freestyled the entire song. Okay, so before that time, Marley Marl, was he working with other artists? Was there a juice crew around or not really? No, there wasn't a Juice Crew at that time, at least not one that I knew of. Like, I didn't find out the whole history of Juice Crew as far as it coming from Disco Fever and belonging to Sal Abatello and the process of getting a ring and becoming a real Juice Crew member. Like, I didn't know any of that at that time. Um, all I knew is that Marley had really big speakers. He used to put them in his window. When he played music, that was what was going to be the mood of the block for the day. So like if Marley woke up early in the morning and he wanted to play disco, then the whole damn day was going to be disco and everybody was going to, you know, do disco moves. If he decided that it was going to be roller skating day, then every song was going to be your roller skating day. So Marley was just known as the music of the projects and mainly of my block because it was on 12th Street. 